Welcome to Am I Live. Brad did his morning dance, so we are good. I am Jay. With me is Brad, who is the dancing machine of Spokane. Yes, there, sir. There he is. All day, every day. Oh, my God. <laughs> we should just make, I, I should just start screen recording these and then make like a compilation video of you dancing during the intro music. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. I think you should. I'm going to have to figure it out. So, Brad, <clears throat> yes. today I figured since everything's starting to reopen or close again or reopen i can't decide anymore i can't keep trying i have no idea either way people are and have been eating out um people are starting to get back to social events um, be it at a restaurant somewhere else so i figured we would at somebody's house whatever figured we would talk about eating out let's do it all right so if anybody has any questions, um, questions, comments, feel free to leave those in the uh, in the stream on Facebook or YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, you can join the conversation when we have them live at macrosync.net slash YouTube. Hit the subscribe button to our channel, and then you'll get notifications when we go live. That was very smooth. <coughs> Pardon me. Jay. What? That was very smooth. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my A game today. I haven't slept, so I'm, I'm right up there. I've only Are you had hallucinating one. yet? No, I've only had one energy drink. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the flow. You've you found a new level. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have one in a minute while we're on the air, so it doesn't matter. I bet you'd go to bed at like 10 a.m. today. No, I'll probably be up again all night. You crazy. I, I like to observe and read stuff. Um, <clears throat> so with eating out, we can, you know, there's a couple components, eating at people's houses, eating at, you know, getting takeout, coming home, going to a restaurant, <clears throat> eating at like parties and things like that. I figure we start with probably the most common, and that's just eating uh, is takeout to come home. Yeah, um, you know, and I, I I think there's two there's two sides to that to that statement, and that is you can people can sometimes eat out. You know, you have a you know, Friday night. Hey, we're going to order pizza pizza night. Okay, cool. And then there's the other side, which I think ev I'll go with everybody except for Brad has has been in before, and that is we all go through little phases where we eat out pretty regularly we're busy we don't have time to cook don't have to got time to go to the store don't want to um you know i know during during the height of all the covid stuff i i did not want to go to the grocery store simply because i didn't want to i didn't, I didn't want to deal with the lines that were yeah. that were there i mean there were hour hour and a half checkout lines i don't want to deal with that so Ain't nobody should, got time for that yeah and in even trying to get groceries delivered was impossible it was a five-day wait time so it was more eating <laughs> eating out most of your meals for convenience uh, once you ran out of the food you had in your house until you could find the time to get to a store for a couple hours. Um, so I think that the, <clears throat> the first place we should, and then th on the other side of that is, is the going, Oh, well, sorry, I got, I was going to double back. Um, so, yeah. So I think that the, the first thing would be the casual, the casual person eating out. That's the, probably the, the most relatable for most people. Okay. Um, even, even if you are eating out, pretty much every day i think that we all understand the casual eat out is the goal right so <clears throat> brett how many times a week do you eat out and i'll answer um like does that include like picking up like a smoothie or something on my way or no no we'll we'll talk we'll, we'll we'll say uh we'll just go strictly like dinner um maybe once Maybe once. That's pretty good. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be twice. Like okay. It just, yeah. Kind of depends on the week, but I'd say it's on average, it's between zero and two. Okay. I'm, I'm, that's funny. I'm on the exact opposite end. I'm probably a five time a week. Yeah. Five time a week we eat out probably. And, and that can, and that, and that ranges, you know, we'll do anything from, from pizza to, you know, tacos to uh, Chinese food. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it, I'm not doing McDonald's for dinner. Um, they're typically decent nope. meals that I can divide up over a day or two yeah. and, and go from there. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting better. I'm getting, I'm getting better, Brad. Are you proud of me? I'm so proud of you. My, I, my, my freezer is filled with food right now for the That's first time. Impressive. And, yeah. I don't, filled with things that I'll eat besides things that a 10 year old will eat. Yeah. Um, it has those two though. So when you, when you do go out for a meal, Brad, what's your, like when you, Right now, it's I assume it's just takeout to come home. Um, mostly, yeah. Okay. So when you um, when you order out, like, what's your if you guys are doing pizza? Are you tracking that? Are you caring how much you eat, or are you just like, hey, it's my one meal a week, I'm gonna enjoy it? 
Um, it's usually I either track it or I order kind of the the best quote unquote healthiest option there is, right? So like if we if we order pizza, I usually get a thin crust pizza mm-hmm. um, with you know generally like chicken and some veggies on top instead of like just pepperoni and sausage. Um, so I I kind of do whenever we order takeout, I kind of do like I just call it damage control. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, what's the best option I can do here that still tastes good and is like an enjoyable option to eat. Like I'm also not going to order like a thin crust pizza with like olive oil and just spinach. Like that's also just not, there's no point in ordering pizza at that point. Yeah, no, that sounds olive oil, olive oil and spinach instead of cheese. Yeah. People do that. Those aren't people that I want to eat with. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, although I, uh, I used to work with a guy at a firehouse who was lactose intolerant, so he'd order a pizza without <laughs> cheese. Well, that's not a pizza. It's no, bread. it was fantastic. I don't like cheese, so it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I highly, um, re- I highly recommend the cheeseless pizza if you... Yeah, but I would say like most of my takeout or like delivery is we'll do a lot of like, um, like Asian takeout, like mm-hmm. Thai... Japanese stuff like that. We usually get like some sort of like, like a cashew chicken with like rice and vegetables. Like that's generally what we get or we'll order like Jimmy John's, but yeah, okay. that's our, that's our general takeout. Yeah. We Jimmy Jimmy John's is the way to go. The, uh, we're not a uh, Thai food is not allowed in my house. I don't know why my wife won't allow Thai food. Um, and we can't order out the only, the only Asian food we're allowed to order out is Chinese food because, my wife is she's Korean and she won't eat any Korean food that's not made by her mom. So so she says it's all inferior, which I agree with after having you know her mom cooking. The best takeout is is Indian food. Do you know I've only had Indian food twice? Because I don't like I don't like spicy food. <laughs> Next time you come to Spokane, we're gonna go to the mango tree if it's still mm-hmm. open. But I can't it do is- anything spicy. I'll die. They have they have very low spice. I, I am I am so bad with spicy food where if you are eating spicy food next to me, I will start to feel ill. Well, that's, I'm gonna order the spicy yeah. thing. Possibly. No, that, I mean that's a, that's a, when I when I first met Lisa, she uh she had <clears throat> ordered um uh, Chipotle and got it like all uh, as hot as they she could get it, and Chipotle. I was like. 10 feet from her and my eyes were just watering uncontrollably because I couldn't and my, I, you know, I looked like a hot mess because I couldn't handle the heat from her food. Um, yeah, I'm delicate like that. So in terms of like takeout, um, what advice could we give people? That's like, like kind of systematic advice, like no matter where you're ordering from or what you're doing, like what are some ways to make takeout? And generally it's it's really just about saving calories for most people. Yeah. Um so like when you order takeout, you can <clears throat> I mean you could very easily end up with a 2000 2500 calorie yeah. meal or you could end up with a 6 700 calorie meal. And in that I mean if you're doing that 3 4 times <clears throat> a week, that is a huge difference. Yeah. And and I th- I think the biggest difference the biggest things are one don't worry about, you know, we we'd like to hit our protein um, you're probably not going to hit your protein from most takeout meals. I think that that's, they're not high protein meals normally, uh, unless you're getting steak or, you know, just chicken. Um, but outside, you know, maybe supplement with a, up your protein earlier or later in the day around that. But on the actual meal itself, I would just worry about the calories, not the actual macros. Um, if you're not doing it every day, if you're doing it every day, different story, but the occasional time worry about calories. Um, and, and, and control your portion size. So you might order a, let's say you ordered like a chicken parm. Doesn't mean you have to eat the whole thing, right? We can, you can eat half of it now and then either half of it later in the day or half of it the next day or half of it two days later. Um, talk to whoever you're eating with, ask them if they want to split something. I think that the splitting something option is, is very underutilized, um, I, I've been able, you know, sometimes you might even find where you can get four days of meals out of it. If I get something, in, you know, and my wife gets something, hey, do you want, <clears throat> I'll have half of mine today. She'll have half of hers. Then tomorrow I'll have the other half of hers and she'll have the other half of mine. Um, and we just got four meals for two days out, out of that two meals each, obviously. But I think that's a really underutilized one. Um, people, you don't have to finish your plate. Places have things you have to go to containers. If you're at home, you can put things in your refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. We actually do that quite a bit is we usually split stuff. 
Um, but yeah, so th- I mean, I think that's that's pretty solid advice. Is like just don't worry too much about the macros. Just kind of focus more on the calorie piece because um, otherwise it can be very hard to find like any food eating out that fits your your macros exactly. Um, so in ter- in addition to just like managing calories, like what are some like kind of systematic things you can do when you're ordering takeout to kind of reduce overall calories? And here's some of the things that I kind of go by. One is if I'm ordering something, I try to avoid like breaded deep fried proteins um, mm-hmm. just because there's generally three, 400 extra calories there that I don't really need in the taste difference between like something that's grilled and fried is not that big of a difference, right? Like a grilled chicken salad versus a crispy chicken salad. The overall experience of that meal is not that much different and you're saving several hundred calories. Um, the other one is just being careful of like the sauces that are in stuff. Like, uh, like, like if you are ordering a salad, you know, a uh, a blue cheese dressing, if you just get it on the side versus on the salad, you're also going to save three, 400 calories. Um, those are like the types of things that you can do just like systematically to, to address some of the very calorie heavy takeout options. Like what other things do you, do you do? Yeah, I think, I think you nailed it with the, with the dressing on the side. Um, I, I do I, same thing. Grilled. I always switch over to grill most of the time. I'm not going to say all the time, but cause I really like mozzarella sticks. Um, but most of the time i will i will go outside of um gr- of fried options same thing with like pot stickers from a chinese restaurant uh, you can get them steamed um versus yeah. fried and it's you know some reduction in calories um for salads same thing i order the order the dressing on the side if i'm bring if i'm getting it to come home i just will say no salad and i know i already have uh, no no dressing and i have dressing at home always um <clears throat> but i i've always asked even when i sit down in a restaurant anything um, if I'm getting any, any type of salad where it's not basically just lettuce, because that's honestly what I just enjoy. If I'm not just getting like lettuce and meat in it, um, I will, if there's <clears throat> a bunch of things or I'm not real clear on what's in the salad, I'll ask for it to be deconstructed. Um, and they'll just put all the ingredients in little containers. You can choose your own portions. That's crazy. I've never even thought of that. I didn't yeah. know that was a thing you could do. Yeah. So not all places will do that. Uh, if they make like a big salad, like I, I don't think Olive Garden would do it because I believe they make just a big, huge <laughs> bowl of salad and scoop out of it. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> the majority of restaurants I've been to, um, I know Chili's does it. I've never had, I've never had a, uh, a problem with it. Yeah. So I'll get, go get the salad. And I, from my understanding, I've never done it for anything else, but I think you can get most meals deconstructed. Um, cause they, you know, they cook everything independently. They just put them all in separate sections of the plate and you can put it together yourself. Yeah, that's probably true. <clears throat> so I'll do, I'll do that. I'll get things deconstructed. Um, the one thing for eating at home that I've, that I, I used to do, I wasn't doing for a long time and I started doing again, um, because I was trying to, f- I've been really hungry lately, uh, and I just can't get full is, you know, m- most of the time when we, when we eat out, let's say you order Italian and you, and you have it delivered or pick up to, to eat at home. Most people aren't ordering their soup and salad with that, right? They're just saying, give me the meal. Oh, do you want soup? No, they don't even second guess it. Um, so I started ordering the salad again, getting it, de- getting just basically the lettuce and whatever is on the side with it. Um, and I, I make sure I eat that first. And I found that when I do that, uh, instead, you know, even at restaurants, instead of having bread, have a salad um, and you can, you, you're more full. You're not going to eat as much. Um, I think that's, a, that's a huge one. I think that's a, a big win for people. The one thing, the downfall that I noticed, um, when people eat at home, especially if they're drinking is it's easier to consume more alcohol at home when you're eating a meal with friends and family than it is to at a restaurant because you don't have to wait for a server to bring you a drink. Uh, you yeah. can just sit there with a bottle of wine on your table and, and pour drinks. Um, so the one thing that I do is if I am having a drink, if I'm anywhere, I, I pour a drink, put it on the table, and I put the bottle back. Um, or, well, that's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but otherwise that bottle will be empty really, really fast. So that way I have to get up every single time, and you know it, it's easier. You know when we're eating, we get lazy. We all do. Um, it's easier. I don't. It's easier. It's it's a lot less work to reach across the table and open a bottle of whiskey and pour it into a cup uh, versus get back up, go to the liquor, ca- go to my the liquor cabinet grab it 
um, realize what I'm doing. You have a lot more time to process that. So anytime you can take, even eating at home, like if you order French fries any or pizza, I always sit the pizza in the kitchen, um, grab, and then I'll sit it in the kitchen, put two or three slices of pizza on there, um, and the Chicago pizza. So they're squares, not the big triangles that are based thinking. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and then, or fries or whatever, and I'll go sit in the, in the dining room. And then if I want more, I have to get back up. I didn't load my plate. It's not easily accessible. I put distance between us, which is one of those things that you lack when eating at home versus at a restaurant. Yeah. Like when we, whenever we order pizza at my house, this is, the, this is literally the worst thing you can do. <clears throat> we don't even get out plates. We no, just yeah, open just the eat. box and yeah. we just stand over the box and just eat until the pizza is gone. Yeah. I, I, I will, I will so say that. Bad. I will say that that's normally the approach I take if I, I'm talking about when and if I'm dieting. That, that's what I do if I'm trying to control it. And right now I am. So I'm yeah. spacing myself. But yeah, it's way more fun too. I, I think I lived for a year in a house without plates. So, you know. Yeah. Um, Brett, when you go to, <clears throat> when when you eat, when you order anything, is there anything that you you specifically say that you do to watch calories that you order like? Typically, you order to watch calories. Obviously, dressing. Um, for example, for I, I, I order if if it, something something comes with cheese. If I'm getting a burger, I never get cheese on it. Um, if I'm getting an omelet, no cheese. A burrito, no cheese. Um, I think it's just an easy way to cut calories. Same thing with mayo. I never, I don't like mayo anyways, but I never put mayo on anything. I, I'm not a big sauce person outside of ketchup, mustard, and maybe dressing, um, and barbecue sauce. And I, I think that that has <clears throat> really made made a big a big difference. And I think it makes a big difference for a lot of people is cutting out that that little thing. How how much flavor is a slice of American cheese putting on your burger versus not having it? Um, if if that piece of cheese makes the meal, in my opinion, it's not worth the calories to have. That that burger itself is not worth those calories. It's not a good burger. Yeah, I mean that's why if you're gonna have cheese, go with something good. American cheese is just. I don't know anything about cheese. I think it's all disgusting. You take that back. Yeah, I don't even like cheese on pizza, man. It's gross. Um, yeah, so what do I... I mean, I think I'm a hard example of that because like, my just normal eating patterns are... They just have kind of been ingrained to be like fairly low-calorie eating patterns. So when I go out to eat, like, I don't worry too much about all the little tiny things. Like, If I order a, a sandwich that has some mayo on it, I don't ask for the for no mayo. I just, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah, so I think a lot of the ways that I'll have clients try to manage the calories is like really decide what actually matters to you in a meal. Right. Um, so like if you really want the crispy chicken salad, cause you just love crispy chicken and you're going out, it's like, okay, well then let's remove maybe the avocado from the salad too, because it's like, okay, avocado is great, but if no, it's, it's not. Avocado it's, is disgusting. If it's 350 calories um, and you would really rather have the crispy chicken, which is about 300 extra calories, which one really matters to you more? Um, like if you are going out and you really want a burger at dinner, it's like, okay, well, then let's just go get that. But let's get a side salad instead of fries. Um, and let's skip maybe the appetizer. Um, so it's really just a matter of like, prioritizing what things when you do have takeout or go out to eat actually matter versus which are just kind of like empty calories on your plate. Um, like for me, when I go out, I have a huge affinity for French fries. So like if I go out, I'm like, hey, I want to go to Red Robin and I want to have 97 of baskets of the endless fries, I'm probably going to get like a chicken Caesar salad with dressing on the side and like a side of fries. I'm not going to get the Royal Red Robin burger with fries because it's like eh, 2,200 calories is probably a little bit much for one meal. Um, but I can probably do 1,400 because I had two bowls of fries, right? So it's like, so good. it's kind of like just prioritizing what actually matters in getting those things in. It's like, if you want dessert, like just prioritize that too. Yeah. Red Robin has some of the best fries. I had a friend in high school who <laughs> went out to Red Robin and he was obsessed with the Red Robin seasoning. So he mm. just took it from the table. Oh my God. <laughs> I told you about when Tim Art, when I was in Spokane, hanging out with Tim. Yeah. And I was like, oh, the best burger place. I, I, I love Tim Art to death. He's he's actually one of my favorite people when he, to, to, uh, to, to go out with. Tim is an absolute blast. And <laughs> he's so I funny. went to Spokane and Brad had some going on. 
<clears throat> and I was hanging out with Tim for the day. And Tim's like, I know the best burger place in all of Spokane. We're going to go there. It's right down the street from his work. We walked over there. It's a Red Robin. <laughs> and, and and I like Red Robin. And so I go, dude, this is a Red Robin. And he goes, yeah, it's the best. They knew him by name there, which made it even funnier. That's awesome. And he, he had like a Red Robin, like, like a player's card for a casino. I don't know what it was for, but uh, it was it was, I mean, Red Robin's fantastic, but every time I think I've been to Spokane, I mean, I have gone to Red Robin. I mean, we have, I have in Chicago. It's just funny. My guess is you've been to Red Robin and the Viking every time that you've met with him. Well, yeah, those are like, I mean, the Viking's great. I, are, I saw you at the Viking play. after a invigorating basketball game, have a plate of hummus. So, well, yeah, bro, <laughs> I got, I got to get my hummus in. Brad came to meet up with us after. We were all having having some drinks and uh, playing uh, shuffleboard at a at a bar, and Brad came in, and I had like thirty wings, I think. Brad came in a little later because he was playing basketball, <clears throat> and sat down and ordered the hummus platter, which I also had some of. But yeah, you talk a lot of smack for somebody who doesn't say much. Well, yeah, I wouldn't order it myself. It was pretty good though, wasn't it? Yeah, no, I mean hummus is good. <laughs> Dante said, good vibes. I love this hour of Am I Live? But you guys clash with my morning classes on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, Sounds like only you need to drop Wednesdays. out of school. Yeah, this is your education, Dante. This is all you need. Yeah, school is over. <laughs> Dante also said, Jay's the type of guy who doesn't put, eat, put cheese even on a burger. No, I don't. I think it's gross. You know what's funny is he said that before you said you yeah, I know. put cheese on your burger. Yeah, he is. Which is which is funny because he... Uh, so my my wife always put cheese cheese on her burgers. Always had cheeseburgers. Told, made fun of me. Like, what are you five? You can't eat cheese on a burger. This this this. I know. Whenever I cook burgers, I don't put cheese on a burger. And the other day, I thought I'd be nice and put cheese on it. And he's like, no, 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 no cheese. I don't like the taste of it anymore <laughs> on, on her burgers because I got her hooked on the lower calorie version. Yeah. Tanya said, "You are lucky, Jam Cream as well." And my mom and dad are gone. Nothing beats mom. Mom cooked Korean food. Yeah, no, my uh, my mother in law's Korean food. She doesn't cook very often anymore, um, but it's absolutely the best. My wife, I I think that she makes it the exact same. I think it tastes identical, and she will say that it it is awful, and she'll want to throw all the food that she makes in the uh, in the garbage disposal. <laughs> Have you ever had bagogi bread? Bulgogi. Bagogi. Yeah. yeah, Korean yeah. short ribs. Yeah, dude, so that the, well, is the, the yeah the, the, the meat. Yeah, yeah, it's maybe my favorite food ever yeah when you come to chicago we'll uh we'll have to we can either uh if if lisa's mom's feeling good we'll have her cook a whole bunch of it and go over to her house and eat and cook it on the hot on the big stone Bunchy. cook thing yeah or uh or we can go over to my house and do it but lisa will tell you about how hers is not good but it'll be the best you've ever eaten can we go visit some guy i know at chicago motor cars and look at sweet supercars <clears throat> Yeah, it's like a mile and a half from my house. I know. That's why we need to go. <laughs> Jennifer said, I like to volume load with a big ass salad dressing on the side before I eat my main course. Yep, that's exactly <clears throat> exactly what uh what I do. Or do I volume load uh, if I don't plan carefully, I just volume load with bread and then eat a full meal and then I'm that's also true. Yeah. <laughs> great tip on the salad first. Uh great tip on the wine. Yeah, the wine I think alcohol is the uh I think alcohol is probably the biggest killer for most people. Alcohol and bread. Yeah, I think it's because it's, it's mostly just mindless, empty calories for most people. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, Jennifer said, I will also systematically eat food on my plate in a particular order. Start with veggies, then the protein, carby stuff for last, usually the best anyways. Yep, that's exactly what I do. Brad, do you do, you do that too? Um, do I, I take like bites, like a couple <clears throat> bites of each thing in a circle. But... um. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, I yeah, can't. No, I, I do al almost. I can't do a hybrid. I mean, I'll have like if I have fries, I'll have some fries. Like the first thing off my in my mouth is a couple fries. But yeah, I'll eat vegetables, the protein, probably together, um, and then I save the fries for the very end. Um, and you typically don't finish them all because you're full. Here's a question for you. I have an answer. Are you the type of person who refuses to let the foods on your plate touch? No, I will mix that in a big. I mean, if so, if I'm if I'm trying to watch what I'm eating, I want that I, I, they can touch, but I want them separated. Um, if I'm just eating to eat or not watching what I'm eating, really, um, I would actually think I kind of just mix everything up and just use a fork and get a flavor explosion in my mouth. My wife is she refuses to let any of her food touch, and even when we have like stir fry, she usually wants it on a plate so she can separate her rice and her veggies and her meat. Why? 
I don't know. She, that's just the way she likes it. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. When we're done, you go you go to Marissa, and you say, Marissa, they have these things called psycho, psycho, uh, therapists, <laughs> and you can go talk to one of them, and they will work with you on your food touch. I, like, I'll tell her that Jay said you need a therapist, and then wait until she calls you. <laughs> <laughs> but tell her it's because you told me that she's crazy because she can't have her food touching. I didn't, I didn't say she cra- she's crazy. You, it was implied. It was an implied comment. <laughs> It's just very funny. That's the way she does it. Huh. Does, is there anything else that she like? Like, is her closet super, super like in line and organized? It's pretty organized. Yeah, both of our closets are pretty organized. We're- yeah, you you having your closet very organized does not surprise me or anybody in the entire world. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to think. My my closet is not organized. I mean, everything's hanging up. I don't have pie hate closed piles. Yeah. Uh, everything's hanging up. I once had everything organized by color and that lasted for one wash cycle. And then I, yeah, I used to have everything by like order of color and then like short sleeve, long sleeve collared, like all of oh, that. Yeah, that. Um, That's normal. But yeah, but everything was like color coded too. Yeah. Then I got married and my wife would do the laundry. Like, it, you know, we kind of just, whoever has time to do it, mm-hmm. we'll do it. And then she will like hang stuff up. So it's like, I don't care. If you're doing the laundry, I really don't care. Oh yeah, it's like when people load the dishwasher. It's like, I, you know how people are like you didn't load the dishwasher right, and I'm like, I, if if you loaded the dishwasher, I don't care what you did. Uh, that I, I I agree, but I always try to be the one to load the dishwasher in my house. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise I, it's not loaded properly, and I won't say anything, but it drives me nuts. It's just yeah. yeah, if you do it, you do it, but I would rather do it. Clothes like I can't. I won't uh if if I do laundry, I will not put Lisa's any of Lisa's stuff in a drawer. And if she does laundry, she can do but she'll put any of my stuff away except for my socks because she refuses to match up socks and it drives me insane. Socks need to be exact. I put marks on my socks so I know when they come out of the package, these two go together. Oh my god. Really? Yeah. Like I mean I can identify which socks go together, but I want the exact pair that came together to go together. Oh my god. That's what? Insane. That's crazy. Yeah, that's not. Oh, come on. Sorry that we can't. We don't have ident- We all don't have eidetic memories and can remember exactly which sock came with. No, but which like one. It, so. So if you order a pack of like six gray socks and there's three pair in there and they all look completely identical. <clears throat> well, that, that's okay. But let's say like I had like a pair of like I'll use Under Armour socks. Like the the longer socks, I use them for either deadlifting or for uh, horse riding. I, they're great under cowboy boots. <clears throat> um, you buy them in and, and, and one pair, so you just get two socks. But I yeah. have like six. I buy, you you pull them off the rack, there's two socks and a little thing. But I bought like six of them. They're all the exact same, but I want the pairs to be exactly with each other. That's so funny. They, they might fit different brands. Like dress I, socks. I wear through socks faster than I think is like even close to normal. Like, I very pair, rarely wear socks. You rarely wear them or wear them out? I, I very rarely just, I very rarely wear socks in general uh, unless oh. it's winter. That's weird. I'm in I'm in sandals. Oh, I'll be yeah. I will wear sandals from like end of February until November. Yeah. No, but I think a pair of socks lasts me maybe three, four weeks before I start wearing holes in them. Well, Brad, open up the open up the purse strings and go somewhere else besides Goodwill dollar ten cent bin for your no, socks. No, like this this includes like very nice socks. What do you do you do you not know how to walk? I it's the weirdest thing. I think I walk like I think I pivot on my feet when I walk. I don't know. All right. Well, next time I see you, I'm gonna I'm gonna videotape you walking and and we, look at your impact points on your feet. Went from eating out to uh, matching socks. Well, it's still an idiosyncrasy. It works. Um, let's see. Where were we? I was. Carrie said I was eating before this, so I was all about the fat, the high fat choices. Had to really change my mindset. I was eating. I was eating me to before this oh keto probably oh, 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 oh yeah yeah which is let me see if i can pull this up because this might be interesting oh she corrected uh, it huh so this is one of those things where people don't realize how much um why is this highlighted i don't know um, just, okay. <laughs> red robins yum that is <laughs> robert commenting that that's awesome i haven't um, seen a red robin commercial in a while I haven't either. 
So this is this is data showing like if you don't have people track their calories and you just have them consume a certain part percentage of their diet of dietary fat, mm-hmm. how much more how many more calories you consume on a daily basis, the higher your percentage of your daily intake of fat is. Wow. I mean that, that's quite a bit, right? I mean that is that is a substantial amount. You're looking just, at cuz you can't tell when it's in there. 600 calories a day, so 4200 a week. Mm-hmm. So what is that? Almost 17, 18,000 a month. How many, Brent, maybe you know offhand, I'll look it up if you don't. How many carbs are in one grain of rice? Mm, milligrams. Milligrams? Yeah. Yeah. So that that's, <clears throat> and then how many? Because you've got to think. It takes several grains of rice to be a gram. Right. And how many, how much sugar <clears throat> and, and, and that whole gram, if you weight out one gram of, of rice, that whole gram is not one gram of carbohydrate. There are other things in there as well. Yes. So, but if you have one gram of sugar, you have one gram of carbohydrates and which is, which has more volume, a gram, <clears throat> which has more volume, a, a gram of carbohydrate rice or a gram of carbohydrate or a gram of sugar uh which one has more volume is a gram of rice right so you can yeah so you can see i'm, I'm thinking out loud here so with, <laughs> with building on that like with carbs you can with in fats too you you can see a lot of things like like healthier food choices like like things like rice and vegetables you can see the calories a lot more than you can with things like added sugar and added fats because they're small, they're more condensed. Does that make sense? Yeah. I hope so. I don't know. It made sense in my head. So here's a question for you. Okay. What is a single long grain of rice weighs an average of blank grams, or you could say it in milligrams. Say that again. A single long grain of rice weighs an average of how many grams? How many grams? Um, yeah, you can put that in milligrams or grams or however I'll with, you think. I'll go with 200 milligrams. No. A microgram? 29 milligrams. 29? Wow. That's the average. Okay. It's pretty crazy. That's probably uncooked too, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm imagining. All right. Let's see what else we got. <clears throat> uh, I'll have the burger and fries from Red Robins for lunch, but won't eat for the rest of the day. Just drink protein. Yep. That's a, a viable option too. Uh, my wife and I went out to lunch a little while ago in... When we got back, my my dogs like to just hang out in the car in the garage. I have no idea why. Like they will go in there and they'll just nap for a couple hours. Um, and so my wife got a, a burger at lunch and she like kept the leftovers in a box and just sat them in the back seat of her car. And so we got home and the dogs like ran out to the garage and we opened the back door and they like climbed in there to take a nap. And then we came to get them later and the burger was gone. <laughs> They ate all, all the leftovers. Oh, that's the worst. Dogs are awful. No, they're not. Zipporah the said, one day you will learn how to pronounce hummus. Because isn't it actually pronounced uh, hummus? Uh, I'm American, and I will yeah. pronounce it. The America. Yeah, yeah, but I believe it is hummus. Hummus? Hummus. It's like H-O-O-M-U-S would be the pronunciation, I think. I have no idea. Hummus. Hummus, I believe. But yeah. we'll keep calling it. We we just call it non-American chip sauce. Non-American chip sauce. That's yeah. what? No. Why? I don't know. This is weird. You're weird. I mean, that's on weird. a previous live, Jay said that he only put cheese on certain foods, not in burgers and tacos. I can't quite recall. Yeah, no, I won't do that either. <laughs> yep. Only very specific things. Like I'll eat it on pizza, it's not my favorite. That's so weird. You're just an anti-cheese person. Uh, I didn't grow up with cheese in the house. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I knew the food touching question was coming. <laughs> so, Brad. Yes. For pe- for eating at a restaurant, <clears throat> what is what is your? Let's say you're at an Italian restaurant. What is like your your go to meal? If I'm at an Italian restaurant, I'm yeah. probably going with uh, chicken marsala. Oh, me too. Yeah. Or chicken piccata, one or the other. Yeah. I make a mean chicken piccata at home. Well, I bet. It's pretty good. We have it probably 
once a month. See, people like my hummus non-American chip dip, dip comment, Brad. You just you just don't have a I, sense of humor. No, the reason I don't think that's appropriate because salsa is also a non-American chip dip. So is guacamole. Yeah, but haven't you seen that Seinfeld episode? You can't call salsa anything other than salsa because people like to say salsa. I have seen that. Yeah. Well. I stand by my statement. Well, guacamole is still one. Guacamole is disgusting and nobody should ever eat it. Do you think French onion dip is just American and has nothing to do with French food? Yeah, exactly. Just like a French fry. I I feel like French fries were French. Yeah, I mean, they're called... Uh, I mean, pomis is... I don't know. Is other languages. Why chicken marsala, Brad? Um, because it is generally one of the better options like from a health perspective slash calorie management perspective at a uh, Italian place. Um, and it's by far the tastiest. Yeah. And I mean, it's like <clears throat> chicken breast and Marsala wine. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's delicious. Yeah. Chicken Francaise. If, if, if I want something that's like fried, I'll go with chicken Francaise because it's coated in egg whites. Your chicken Francaise. Yeah. That's a good one too. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I some Italian places will have like a cioppino, like a seafood, mm -hmm. um, or a booyah base. I'll if it's like winter time, I'll do one of those too. What do you do? You typically have a do you typically have the like go to meals at every restaurant you go to? Like, are you a menu browser? I mean, I, I browse the menu just to see if there's anything that catches my eye, but I typically order the same, the same things at every style restaurant. Jay is the fish and chips guy. I love fish and chips. Um, yeah, I usually browse <clears throat> the menu except for like places that we go to frequently. I know exactly what I'm going to order. Yeah. But like, like let's say you go to a new Italian restaurant. Are you still, you're going to look over the menu, but are you still pretty much ordering chicken marsala still? No, unless something really catches your eye, I'll look through the menu. Okay, yeah. So if, there's I, my, nothing, I, if there's nothing that I that's new that I'm like, wow, I'll probably go back to the chicken marsala. Yeah, no, my yeah, that's that's how. I, if I see something, I'm like, ooh, this is kind of unique to this place. I'll go with it. But typically, especially if I'm trying a new restaurant that's local to me, I order the same thing so that way I can compare the food. <laughs> yeah, I already have a, a taste for this. I know what I what it should taste like. Um, what about? Uh, Danny said, uh, "Italian, Italian is my downfall, and I haven't been able. I haven't been to one yet. I haven't been to one. You haven't been to. Wait, what? You Olive been Garden. To... What? Olive Garden. You haven't been I've to an been Italian to... restaurant? I don't know. Yeah. I, would you call... is is Olive Garden still considered Italian? Like, is that is it real Italian or is it just? I've only been to an Olive Garden once. Um." Yeah. Okay. When you're there, your family, though, right? That's very true. Okay. Um, what about shrimp scampi? I, I don't know. I don't. Shrimp scampi. I, I mean, I know what shrimp is, but I, I know people order. I never. I don't know what shrimp scampi actually is. Shrimp scampi is. I'm looking it up uh, too, brother. It's basically like a olive oil with like red pepper flakes some yeah. white wine i mean it it's looked, fine i it just i'm not like pasta with shrimp. yeah pasta with shrimp yeah oh yeah it's yeah i always somebody said olive garden is not italian uh and, oh since counting macros tiny hasn't been to an italian restaurant gotcha i'm gonna i'm gonna google olive garden if it says it's an italian restaurant then i'm believing them Oh, it says Olive Garden Italian Restaurant. I, I, I think that that's like calling Chuck E. Cheese a pizza place. Chuck E. Cheese is a arcade. They have absolutely the best pizza, though. Are you serious? Yeah, I think I was in my mid twenties when I finally stopped ordering pickup pizza from Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> They would, they wouldn't, and and at that they that was right when they. I remember when they stopped like that, like they wouldn't let you in if you didn't have a kid with you. And I was in my twenties, so I'd have to like call them. But so yeah, that's be, a little creepy. Yeah. Uh, See, she agrees. Tanya agrees. You know what? My Tanya? favorite. I have two games that were my actually it was probably three that were my favorite at Chuck E. Cheese. 
what? the ski ball. I yeah. love ski ball. Mm -hmm. um, it was maybe later on, but there was the game where you put the quarter in and you'd have to flip the click the trigger and it would flip it and you'd have to land it in these dinosaur heads. I that remember was that awesome. one. Um, and then I also loved that little hockey game where you like flip the guys with the. Oh, yeah. That's the bubble dome. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked bubble dome hockey, air hockey, and ski ball. Whack a mole was pretty cool too. I'm not going to lie. All right. I'm looking up the. Uh, sh oh, shrimp scampi is actually not terrible. <clears throat> it has 29 grams of protein, 54 grams of carbohydrates, and is 510 calories. It is That's not bad. No. Um, so, like, you know, you and I were talking earlier about how you can save a lot of calories by just like making some smart choices. <clears throat> yeah. Like, for example, chicken Alfredo is 1,600 calories. Ooh. Or you get the herb grilled salmon and it's 460 calories. So, like, that's salmon. a That's a low calorie salmon. Well, I mean, not really. Really? 45 grams of protein. Oh, okay. Um, 20, 29 grams of fat, so it's 460. Yeah, I mean, so that's like, um, that is a major difference. So if you do, if you go out three times a month and you make those different choices, that's about a pound in a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's what I know about the golf. Well, oh, what do you think the most calorie heavy meal is? Like single meal, not catering pans. Oh, that is going to be a. I'm gonna guess that it has the word chicken in it, <laughs> and it's probably some with Alfredo sauce. I don't know. It is bum bada bum bum the tour of Italy. Oh, I don't know what that means. How many calories? Sixteen eighty. Sixteen thousand. Sixteen hundred and eighty. Oh. Oh, that's the most, that's the biggest one calorie item. That's actually not too bad. I thought it'd be worse. Yeah. I mean, isn't a blooming on, onion like 10,000 calories? I don't think it's quite that bad, but I know it's supposed to be shared between people. Uh, Janelle Howard, I ate Primanati, Primanati Bros, uh, pub sandwich style place the other day. Half of the sirloin steak classic sandwich. Tried to find nutritional info on the sandwich I ate, but couldn't. How would you track what you ate? <clears throat> um, so first, if if you can't find it, look. Find if, it. Yeah, find some find some that's equivalent. Um, the other thing you can do is, and <clears throat> now you can pretty much find any restaurant. <clears throat> Most restaurants have their nutritional information on the internet. Um, when, when you first start tracking and eating out, my recommendation is that you eat at only at places that list of nutritional information. Yeah. Um, that's not going to be forever. It's, it's, this is a learning process and this is like your training wheels. So you've been eating at home, measuring, weighing stuff. You have a pretty good idea of what size portions should be. Then you're going to start adding in food, eating out. You're going to go to like chain restaurants that list their nutritional info. And then you're also going to increase whatever they list by 10% because they're going to be off. <clears throat> and then after you're used to seeing portion sizes and what they should be, you have a good idea. You go somewhere that doesn't have that. You have two options. One, you can either estimate based off, like Brad said, um, chain restaurants that do list similar items that you're kind of familiar with. Or you can actually take the item. If you're, if you're bringing it home, take the item home, take it apart, weigh it, and then put it back together and eat it. And then every time you get it, now you already have your own set of macros for it. There's a little deli down the street for me that I've done that for three sandwiches. And it is, it's, it's been very, very, uh, it was very useful when I was dieting. I had three things that I could go to. I knew exactly how many calories they were and I didn't have to worry. Boom. Roasted. Boom. Oh my God. <laughs> that may, that may be one of the best ones ever. Yeah. Uh. So, Brad, is there anything else you want to cover? Oh, um, I don't know. What exciting things do we need to tell people about? Um, okay. Oh no, I heard that there's a. Uh, I heard that there's a course coming out. There is a course coming out. I heard somebody worked their ass off on it. I don't know who that was. It was not me. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was not me, and it was one of the two people on this podcast. <laughs> 
So uh, yeah, the, the new Drew Wiki course coming out. Brad's been working on it for a long time. Um, it is a self-guided course, um, $199. Going to be out September 15th, Brad. That's the plan. September 15th. Um, you can go right to macrosync.net slash NutraWiki hyphen course hyphen opt in. That's N U T R I W K I hyphen C. You forgot an I in there. You spell it then, doctor. Uh, macrosync.net slash N U T R I W I K I hyphen course hyphen opt in. Opt in. O P T I N. T-I. So, so the, this course is Brad. How how long should it take somebody to complete the course? And uh, well, first, what's the what's the goal of the course? And the how goal long will of the take course is to be awesome. It's just a course on how to be kick ass. Yeah. So basically, if you think about it, there are two main forms of nutrition education in our country. Um, there are there is nutrition education geared for kind of health professionals, nutritionists, dietitians personal trainers. And those are like very formal, like multi-year courses um, or year-long courses that are designed for professionals. Then there is the, here's a popular media magazine or book that's more designed to sell you some idea rather than actually educate you. Um, So what we decided to do is we decided to make a course that is, you know, a somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 hours to complete start to finish uh, course that's designed specifically for the client. Um, so like the actual consumer instead of the professional. So we try to take all of the major concepts and distill them down into actual kind of scientific based information, but that's easily digestible and applicable to you as a client um, and deliver it in a course. You are applicable to me as a client i would hope so so with the course how long should it take somebody to complete and what do they get at the is it a what's the who is it who's it for like is this for somebody who is a advanced dieter a fitness professional somebody looking to become a fitness professional or a fit and or a fitness professional looking for further education i would say it's more geared towards the average person just so looking to, to gain the higher uh, knowledge level yeah it's really kind of the teach a person how to fish feed them for a lifetime okay yeah perfect and then how about how long should it take to complete um i would say it's probably going to be about 60 hours okay. and there will be there's written content there's video lectures there will be audio um, like audio only, there will be transcribed versions of the lectures, there will be quizzes, and there will be um, like live additional presentations. Perfect. By live, I mean virtually live, not in person live. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that sounds awesome. So we will get that out. Uh, if you have not signed up for the, uh, if you're <clears throat> if you're on the Macros Inc. newsletter, you will uh, you will get that email to you. Went out yesterday. If not, go to macrosync.net slash NutraWiki hyphen course hyphen opt in. Brad, we have a couple comments and we'll take off. Yo. And he said, is it safe to say if you were in a deficit that eating out can be a bit challenging with the average dinner being five to 600 calories? It may take a lot of calories that you use in a day. Uh, yeah, I just try to tell people like if you're really, f- I mean, first of all, whenever you're dieting, the goal is to get in and out of dieting as quick as possible, um, right? You just want to get it done and then move on. Uh, so that's the first thing. And then what I tell people is it can be much harder to control your calorie intake when you're eating out. So if you can limit it while you're in kind of a deficit, it's probably going to make things much easier. Yeah. Agreed. And and the other thing is that, you know, I talked about in the beginning, remember, you don't have to eat the whole meal. You can, let's say you, you order something and it's, and let's say you order something and it's, it's 1200 calories. You can divide that up over three days. So if you just want to put in 400 calories per day, divide it up as you see fit, you know, whatever portion sizes and eat that over three days, that's fine. It doesn't mean you don't have to cut it exactly in half and and get the exact if if you know you have two thirds on one side and a third on the other, you don't have to divide. You can just divide that evenly over two days. You don't have to divide it up specifically like you know two thirds on one day and a third on the other. Yeah. 
Um, Jennifer said, can you discuss how fast food options are often demonized by people? Fast food can be a viable convenience option and can still work for people who are trying to meet goals. Yeah, I think I eat more fast food than you. That's I'm probably positive. very true. I'm positive I do. I yeah. had McDonald's for breakfast today again. Um, the uh, So like today I had an egg, Mc, my breakfast today was an egg McMuffin with no cheese. So an egg McMuffin is 300 calories with no cheese. It's 260 or 270. Um, that's a, that's a really low quality or low um, calorie breakfast. And then I also had a protein shake with it to keep my protein higher. So my whole meal was under 320 calories. Um, I was full. I ate that at 5 30 this morning i'm still not hungry um i i also think that people i i i have said it and i will <clears throat> say it again and, and back it up i i can't remember if you agree with me or disagree with me on this one brad You're that mcdonald's is the best play is the best restaurant for someone dieting because you can customize any single thing you want, any way you want, and find the nutritional value for it. <clears throat> and fast food restaurants work on such a small margin that their portion sizes are exact. The only one they're not is French fries, but they measure everything out. Everything in McDonald's is systematic, right? So if you order a slice of cheese, it's the exact same size. If you order when they take um, margarine and put it on, on something, it's the, almost the exact same size because their margins are so tiny. So they're, they're, they're more consistent than say a, a mom and pop deli. Um, and I can, I, I know everything that's on there. I can customize it and they display the calories right there. I mean, you can get everything from, from oatmeal and a salad to McDonald's to uh, a, a, a quarter pounder with double meat and cheese. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's the healthiest. I'm saying it's just the best, most customizable option for someone who's following a flexible dieting approach, eating on the go. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is a reasonable option for people who are super busy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, agreed. Yeah. So I always tell people the best restaurant is your kitchen. Um, well, but yes. yeah, but on yeah. Uh, in terms of fast food, you know, I think it's, it really is one of those things where it just kind of depends on what is the goal and where mm -hmm. are you in your life, right? Yeah. If you are a 20 to 30 year old person who like the only thing that really matters right now is losing 20 pounds. I think that's a totally viable option yep. for people. Um, if you have larger health goals, if you have sustainability goals, things like that, then you, yeah. you know, so it, I mean, it's one of those things where it can be a tool used in hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my point is just from a, from somebody trying to lose weight, on the go, if especially if you don't have something planned, pl you know, we all know that what, no matter how well we plan, there's always going to be things that come up. I think that McDonald's has enough options where whatever macros you're trying to fill and you have set aside for this meal, you can find something at that restaurant and customize it to fit those macros, to fit that, to fit that, those calories at least. <laughs> yeah. And French fries are delicious. Well, now I want like a, the McDonald's breakfast sandwich, Jay. Who has, have, you know what the the death of me was were uh, the McGriddle. Those things are absolutely disgusting. You, what? I hate McGriddles. Why? They're way too sweet, dude. It's a pancake sandwich. Yeah, not good. And I don't like sweet food. How do you not like those? Because they're just the most overrated food. Maybe you just need to have be more of a child and less responsible. You know what? I actually do really enjoy at McDonald's. What? The coffee because it's like I a hate dollar and you get a lot. I hate their coffee. Well, it just, it just doesn't taste good. I it's like not, coffee. It's not great coffee, but it is oh. a great deal on coffee. Oh, it's a great deal. Yes, it's just not good coffee. Uh, will there be CEUs for the course, Brad? Uh, I'm going to look into that. Okay, that was not my original intent. Um, but if people would like CEUs for it, I can probably sort something out like that. I have a sneeze coming, so pardon me. I can me. probably Bye. call a guy. Jay just sneezed live on camera. I didn't. I muted my mic, though. Aren't you impressed? You probably have Big Rona. No. Probably. Pretty sure I already had it. Um, <clears throat> Zipporah said, I really like the attitude of you're doing it. You're doing it. Do it. Get it over with. Instead of trying to avoid admitting to dieting, which I think a lot of people try to do. Yeah, a lot of people try yeah. to avoid that this is what they're doing yeah buddy and then finally daniel said good info thank you guys well you are welcome all right brad i think that's it 
Um, what else do we need to know? Um, nothing. If anybody's interested in coaching, you can go on over to macrosinc.net slash services. Sign up for a two-week free trial. Uh, after that, if you like coaching, stick around. Learn some skills that you can use for life. If you're listening on the podcast, you can head on. If you're listening on a podcast, uh, audio only podcast, you can head on over to macrosinc.net slash YouTube or macrosinc.net slash free group. And you can join our Facebook group, like us on YouTube, join these conversations live and ask some questions. If you are not listening on the podcast and you would like to listen on the podcast on the go with just audio so you can listen to us while you sleep, listen to us while you drive, while you walk the dog, or just to ignore your significant other, uh, you can go to macrosinc.net slash podcast, and we are on most major podcast things. Um. I have no good new jokes today, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Well, then, Brad, when will we see yes. each other again? Um, well, you and I have a meeting in two hours. I so probably literally. I, I meant like same macro time, same macro. Time. Oh, we will see you on Friday uh, at the same macro time. On and the same macro channel. All right. Everybody have a good day. I will say... Thank you.